Welcome to an introduction to the Commission on Narcotic Drugs. The Commission on Narcotic Drugs, or CND, is the principal policy-making body within the United Nations on the world drug problem. As the lead entity in the United Nations System for Drug-Related Matters, the Vienna-based United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime acts as secretariat to the Commission. The Commission was established in 1946 by the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, or ECOSOC, and has 53 states members that are elected by ECOSOC for a four-year term. The Commission is one of the eight functional commissions of the Economic and Social Council. The Commission meets twice per year in the Vienna International Center. The regular session takes place in the first half of the year, usually in March, for five days. The reconvened session of two days is held at the end of the year. The CND has developed all documents that have guided international drug policy in recent years, in 2009, in the Political Declaration and Plan of Action, member states agreed on concrete measures to address demand reduction, supply reduction and to enhance international cooperation. Five years after its adoption, in 2014, the CND reviewed how member states had implemented the Political Declaration and Plan of Action. In 2016, the 30th Special Session of the General Assembly, in New York, adopted an outcome document that had been prepared by the Commission. The UNGAS 2016 outcome contains then 100 operational recommendations in seven thematic chapters on all aspects of the world drug problem. In the 2019 Ministerial Declaration, the CND took stock of the progress made and committed to accelerate the implementation of their commitments made in 2009, 2014, and 2016. What do these policy commitments mean in reality? I want to give you some examples. As Forum for Addressing All Aspects of the World Drug Problem, the CND works to implement joint commitments in preventing drug abuse or treating drug use disorders, ensuring rehabilitation, recovery and social reintegration. Enshrined in the three international drug control conventions, the CND works to ensure the availability of controlled substances for medical and scientific purposes. In the field of supply reduction, member states work through the CND to prevent drug-related crime, counter illicit trafficking and address related organized crime. The Commission works to ensure that drug policies, respect, protect and promote all human rights. The CND also addresses threats posed by new psychoactive substances, amphetamine-type stimulants, the misuse of pharmaceuticals, or the increased use of the Internet for drug-related activities. With a view to addressing drug-related socioeconomic issues, member states promote through the CND alternative development programs to eradicate poverty and enhance the sustainability of social and economic development and technical and financial cooperation for comprehensive and balanced development-oriented drug policies and viable economic alternatives. The CND will review progress against all policy commitments again in 2024 and 2029. In the meantime, the CND holds annual, thematic discussions to discuss ongoing challenges. Let us now turn to the function of the CND that is probably known best to the general public the Commission's power to decide on the scope of control of substances. The Commission places substances under international control by adding them to lists of substances which are called schedules. The schedules are linked to the obligation by states to undertake specific control measures. Let me give you a fictitious example. A government is concerned by a new substance that has been observed on drug markets and that causes harm to users. It is sold on the street under the name of XYNPS. The government notifies the Secretary General about the chemical formula of XYNPS and recommends that this substance be placed under international control. Let's say the government wants that XYNPS be placed in Schedule 1 of the Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs of 1961, because this is the schedule for substances that are highly addictive and highly liable to abuse, and the government states that XYNPS has these characteristics. The Secretary-General transmits this recommendation to all states' parties and other stakeholders, and states' parties are invited to submit comments. The World Health Organization will review the recommendation from a medical and scientific point of view. 
depending on the substance in question and the schedule where the substance should be placed, this review could also be carried out by the International Narcotics Control Board. After this, the recommendation is put to a vote at the CND, usually during its regular session in March. If the CND decides to place XYNPS in Schedule 1 of the Convention, all states will in future be obliged to apply certain control measures regarding the production, manufacture, export and import of XYNPS. For example, they would have to license and regulate the production and manufacture and control the export and import of XYNPS from and to their territory. For substances placed in the other schedules under the three conventions, the applicable control measures may be stricter or more lenient, according to the Commission's assessment of their dependence potential, abuse liability and therapeutic usefulness. Finally, the Commission does not only work towards the implementation of international drug policy, but it aims at contributing to sustainable development in a broader sense. As a functional commission of ECOSOC, the Commission contributes to the work of the Council and the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York. It provides annual inputs to the high-level political forum on sustainable development and showcases its contribution towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda. The General Assembly also regularly discusses drug-related issues and adopts resolutions prepared by the CND. The Commission also closely cooperates with other commission on topics such as crime prevention and criminal justice, gender, or statistics. We hope you found this brief introduction to the work of the CND useful. If you wish to receive more information, we offer you a number of useful resources such as e-learning tools and manuals on the different aspects of the CND's work. You are also invited to follow the Commission's on social media.